Welcome everybody. Uh, ben Hutchings, uh, also known as BWH, will uh, present uh, this buff uh, about destabilizing the Linux, uh, Linux kernel API. Okay, um, so the basic prob problem is explained in the description of this talk, which I've brought up here. Um, the uh, kernel, the uh, upstream developers for Linux kernel do not attempt to maintain a stable ABI, even for bug fixes. Um, we kind of try to keep the ABI stable during the, the uh, uh, during a single stable release. So security fixes and security fixes and point updates uh, generally don't change the module ABI. Um, except sometimes in very uh, specific areas, we don't think uh, tree modules will be affected. Uh, even then, it takes a lot of work to do that. So the question is, is that actually necessary? Uh, could we just keep changing the ABI? Uh, the package names for uh, Linux kernel builds all incorporate uh, an, uh, an identifier for the ABI, similarly to shared library packages. And that's because if you build a, an extra modules package using module assistant, for example, that will have a dependency on a specific ABI, and therefore we need to have a package name that identifies that ABI. So if, if we start changing the uh, uh, package names during a stable release, there are some problems that, that could cause um, and uh, the purpose of this meeting then is to to try to figure out can we can we solve those problems? Uh, as it turns out, since I just, since I um, uh, proposed this event, one of those problems has been solved, uh, which is very nice. Uh, apt uh, no longer. App will now let you auto remove uh, older kernel packages if they were installed as a result of upgrading the meta packages. So that's good. Um, but we still have two other problems, basically, which are. Ben, could I interject at that point? Okay. I'm um, app developer, so I can comment on this a bit. Mm -hmm. It's not completely solved. I mean, it's just really passively working. Because as soon as you have a firmware package installed or an out of tree model or something like that, which depends on the uh, Linux image, it's going to be kicked back. So most of these users will still have it around. And uh, well, the firmware packages actually. never depend on Linux image packages. Um, the they are depending on the uh, Linux image, the WIFL package, and as each Linux image uh, specific uh, package provides this Linux oh image no. uh, virtual package. Really? Uh, so, so if you have a dependency on a virtual package that prevents any of the. Yes. Yeah, I suppose it would because how would you know which one could be but auto removed? Yes. So okay. So we need to get rid of those uh, it's somehow. <laughs> it's not. It's not even a dependency. It's a suggestion. But yeah. So what is a suggestion prevents a suggestion. auto removal? Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's it's a suggestion, so it provides a feature, so you can't auto remove it, because yeah, the user might depend on this. <laughs> so, um, I mean, we need a bit more metadata for this actually, because we don't know that the kernel is actually, yeah, that these are not completely different packages, but just version updates actually with, yeah, just a different name. So there needs a bit of more logic or metadata to distinguish these. And yeah, that will be. Well, I can't, I can't understand why suggests would, would prevent auto removal, unless you say that. Uh, I mean, for example, you should, have Should, that's what I like, should. I mean, you have, a, for example, you have a text editor and it suggests a um, package to print something, uh, print your uh, Right, but, but, but suggestions aren't auto-installed. Yeah, 
So then you would think it would be manually installed. So then it would be manually installed, and then for that it wouldn't, they would never be auto removed. Yeah, anyway. sure, but you could have it installed by another package. I mean, um, another package could depend on it, and you are removing this package, but uh, you have you have grown used to the suggestion uh, established, so it's kind of tricky to out remove it because you could lose something, or the user could lose something. It's, it's a, I mean, it's a bit complicated. Uh, there is. Uh, yeah, I could, <laughs> but I could also forget it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's a complicated so trade-off, and we are usually defaulting to not breaking user experience because, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> Actually, if you are depending on something and it gets auto removed, so yeah. Okay, so we are going to have to. Maybe get rid of those suggests Linux image, which is a, I think is a stupid suggestion yeah, in the first place because it's not you know only the suggestion, also the out of three modules are sure, but that's that's that point uh, kind of covered by point B. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, <laughs> it's still more work. That's just what I was trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not completely solved. Okay, so any bright ideas? Uh, I've so, th so this is in, um, I've created this document on Gobby under devconf13 boff linux dash module dash abi. Um, so I can see a few people found it already. Uh, um, yeah. So, so the other problems, um, yeah, out of three modules need to be rebuilt, which uh, DKMS can do, module assistant does not do, and practically can't because it run, because that would involve installing packages while installing another package, which doesn't work. Uh, so I don't know if there's an, um, Can something be done to uh, make it easier to uh, build and deploy updated packages on build on one machine and then deploy it throughout your organization um, using either DKMS or module assistant? Um, No ideas? Um. Another hand? Does, uh, I'm not very familiar with DKMS. Um, does it already uh, has the possibility to uh, build some uh, meta package, which depends on the version you generate. That way people could uh, just uh, install up get install this meta package and uh, if they have some local mirror where they push uh, the newer versions, then at least uh, these versions would get uh, cycled out automatically. Um, right. Well, uh, see, so DKMS can build packages, and then they're organized at the moment. They're built uh, for a specific version of the uh, of the module, and then they can contain uh, binary 
builds of that module for one or more kernel versions. So then what you could you can potentially have is a single package that gets updated to a new version for each uh, kernel version and the package name doesn't change. But then that wouldn't have any that wouldn't have any dependency information. That's how that's how DKMS works at, at present. Uh, that it might be possible to uh, improve on that um, uh, to build packages more like what Module Assistant does, where they uh, where they are specific to a to a kernel uh, ABI version, and then and then they have the correct package dependency information. Uh, has anyone tried um, maintaining a uh, a kind of a private repo with uh, modules packages within the organization? Uh, you want a mic? Um, yeah, well, sort of. I've got a private repo for my. Um, Um, for packages built from uh, NVIDIA drivers, which are shared between my computers at home. Um, and as far as I recall, they are built by DKMS. Yes, I'm in fact, there are. Manually installing them anywhere I need them, so um, I think it doesn't really fix the problem here. Okay. Uh, also, uh, I, I maintain my own repository for, for my company, of uh, for our company, of uh, uh, Daddy models, yeah. uh, which are out of tree. Um, uh, DKMS, of course, has a problem of uh, not maintaining the, the architecture. Of uh, not what? Of, of the not not keeping the the architecture so we we use module assistant um, on when we build for centos there are i forgot the name of the of the model building framework there it's not it's kmp um not or kmod kmod yeah right it's been called different names by different vendors even though it's more or less the same thing yeah basically um Basically, they put the model in, in updates, and they seem to have some... Oh, you think of the weak updates? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah right, we weak updates. And they s seem to have some sort of... Yeah, I kind of forgot about that. So the way the weak updates works uh, is that if, the, if you have a module installed in... I think in the up updates or extra subdirectories, and you get a new install a new kernel version where the ABI might have changed, but none of the symbols that that module depends on have changed, so it's still uh, loadable in the new kernel version. Then it gets linked into the weak updates directory for the new kernel version. And that way, if the ABI is mostly stable, then, uh, which is the case for for uh, Red Hat and and Suzy uh, kernels, um, then our tree modules keep working. Uh, that sort of depends on their having they they have a, a official whitelist of. Uh, symbols which they promise not to break, so they they keep a subset of the kernel ABI se uh, separate, and then our tree module vendors are expected to uh, stick to that. If they uh, they can't use anything outside of that list, potentially we could try to do s maintain something like that in Debian, but it requires requires a lot of thought, uh, and I can be sure that some 
of the out of tree module packages that we have are going are going to depend on things which we where we wouldn't really want to whitelist. We, we, if, if we, if we uh, listed, if we said every symbol was currently used by an out of tree module package in Debian, all of those symbols are going to be stable, then we would be pretty much back to where we are now. Uh, we would make, have to make the same sort of uh, efforts to avoid changing ABI, I think. I mean, I haven't gone through and 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 try to list all these symbols, but I don't think it would make the problem a lot easier. Uh, just to give some some uh, information, uh, the DADI models I think were broken. I'm I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly, but were broken. I think between six dot two and six dot three, and maybe between CentOS, mm -hmm. uh, bec and maybe between six dot three and six dot four. Maybe the, I guess it would be less disruptive if we said we promised that uh, that security updates won't change the ABI because then, but, but uh, stable point releases could uh, because there's less urgency of, up, of installing a point release and therefore uh, more opportunity to prepare and rebuild your uh, uh, module package, your whatever, out of tree module packages your organization might depend on. What do you think of that? Uh, something, uh, something also I didn't really check. Uh, how does it uh, work with, um, with uh, d different kernel fra uh, flavors? What, what do you mean? Um, different kernel flavors on uh, i36. Well, okay, each each flavor obviously has its, has its own ABI in a way. Oh but okay. aside from that, so we can make... No, I, mean, I mean with weak updates, so... Oh, okay, so it's really... Okay, so no problem. So, so yeah, each... We kind of have uh, a... Every flavor has its own ABI, but then every... Uh, then we have ABI versions for changes that cut that affect all of those at once, or most of those. Uh, does that make sense, or am I just being confusing? Um, regarding the point release and security updates, um, when you do a point release that has an ABI change. Mm. Then the security update after that is it? Yes, that's on true. Yes. Or the other one? So if there's a security update immediately after a point release, then yes, it does become urgent to update. we uh, security updates in the past that needed to uh, update the uh, to increase the RB anyway? Um, I think there has been, but not for a long time. There was during the Lenny uh, release cycle. But I think it, it could also, I, th I think I can get, uh, imagine m many kinds of security updates that are only possible with an API change. Hopefully this kind is very, uh, doesn't happen very often. Yeah. But I guess it will happen uh, someday, something like this will happen anyway. 
So the uh, security update immediately after a an, an point release is also something that should happen uh, hopefully not that often. So maybe that was would be just a special case of usually it should not be increased in security updates, but in certain cases it can happen. Mm -hmm. So um, aside, they're putting aside security updates that are forced to change the ABI. Um, I was thinking if it's perhaps manageable to uh, tell people that after a point release, if there is a kernel security update, we will also update the old kernel for a while, like three months, half a year, whatever, after the point release. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's possible because we don't then have two different versions of Linux in the in the same suite in uh, two different versions of the source package with separate that would have separate binaries. No, in fact, that would even be using some of the same binary packages in the same suite. I don't know whether that can support that. Well, I know we uh, actually we didn't, but Ubuntu has multiple kernel releases on the same distribution, um, and. It's usually that the meter package just points to the newest one, uh, like it's done with our releases, but um, yeah. the older release is usually still kept. So it, it, it might be possible. There's also the question if we can afford to have that the additional maintenance burden yeah. of actually yeah. patching two kernels instead of one. Um, I'm not seeing anyone else writing in in the uh, lobby note. Is this is this just my machine not updating, or uh, um, as far as I know, the Ubuntu uh, kernels are a separate packages, so a new version is not a package. Um, but uh, regarding that, it is possible to have that, but it's um, definitely not so easy to do. Right. It would be more work for both release teams and FTP teams to make sure that uh, that works and keeps working. Yeah, I don't want to. I uh, definitely don't want to make uh, lots more work for other teams. So, um, would anyone, uh, does anyone know uh, about how uh, how Ubuntu deals with out of tree modules? Um, do they attempt to support? Uh, I know they uh, tend to favour DKMS. 
Um, do they have anything to make? Uh, do they have Do they have anything to assist in rebuilding modules with DKMS on the machines other than where they're going to be installed? Or is the assumption that uh, wherever you use these F3 modules, you do have the uh, build uh, tool chain installed to make auto updates work? No, no one? Okay. So, um I'm, I'm not actually working on, on our kernel stuff, so I'm not 100% sure, but as far as I know, they actually um, are just using DKMS and relying on build tools on the machine where you install the packages and modules. Right. Um, okay, so it looks like we don't really have any uh don't have any solutions here really <laughs> uh maybe some I at least some ideas um. well anyone else got anything to say before I wrap this up Did anyone, uh, did, uh, I haven't been looking, did anyone uh, have a come up with a point on IRC? Uh, no, don't see anyone there. Uh, right there. Well, uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, and. Uh, um, maybe we'll solve this later, but uh, I guess we're not going to change anything right now. <laughs>